Hey there, and thanks for watching. So over the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you just a simple way to connect a Google Doc with a custom GPT via an action. So let's get started. So if you've built custom GPTs before, you know that you want to give those GPTs access to some knowledge base. Maybe you upload a PDF, maybe you give detailed instructions, but sometimes either the knowledge itself or those instructions, you want to be more dynamic. So let's take, for instance, let's say I'm an asset manager. Let's say I own a property in a hypothetical town, Greentown, and on a quarterly basis, I wanna write a report for my investors or for myself. And let's imagine that I have notes in a, say, a Google Doc like this that my property manager drops in that contain things like a market report, in this case, third quarter, maybe some property performance reports on a monthly basis. And this information could change. I might have multiple stakeholders to this document that are updating or increasing or adding to, I should say. And I want my custom GPT to have access to that real-time information. And so I can write what is effectively a, an endpoint API or, or give access to this document to some technology through a, an API. And I do that by using what uh, Google calls Apps Script. It's a tool uh, built uh, in tandem with Google Docs and Google Sheets. It's somewhat synonymous with how in Google or in Microsoft Word or Excel, you can write macros, uh, code that expands the functionality of those tools, but you can do something similar here with Google Docs. And so to do that, the first step actually is to make this document available. So I'll click share to anyone with the link as a viewer. Now, the warning here is as soon as we do that, anyone who has the link can, can see and read the information in this Google Doc. And so uh, you want to avoid having overly confidential proprietary information in this doc, because even if you keep the link private, it could potentially uh, get out there and then someone have access to it. So that's just something to keep in mind. So as soon as we do that, we then are going to need to go to Apps Script. We do that by going to Extensions, App script, and here is where we actually write the code, and we will be creating a API endpoint to this Google Doc. And so how do we do that? Well, I don't write code. If you're watching this video, you likely don't write code either, and so in this day and age, we use a large language model to write code. So I come back, or I come to ChatGPT, and I'm gonna prompt it. Now, in my written instructions for this tutorial, you can find a link to those in the description of the video, or if you've, uh, you're accessing this on the blog post, you'll find these written instructions. I have this prompt that, that seems to work. There's other prompts that you can write, but effectively, please write code for apps, Google Apps Script to retrieve the text content of a Google Doc by its ID and make it accessible via a web app URL in JSON format. Uh, the code should include a do get function, which will allow access to the document content when the web app URL is visited. Now, keep in mind, if you don't have all that, that technical piece, you can still simply say, hey, write code that would give, uh, for app script that would give my document access to uh, the chat GPT, and it would write some code and it may or may not work, and then you could iterate back and forth, and you would eventually solve these issues around needing to be have a do get function and have, uh, have a web app URL and have it output in a JSON format. It, you would get there, but this is a prompt that speeds that up. And then I need to share the link. I'll just come back to share. I choose copy link. And then where it says include document link here, I'll just replace that with the link. So now it will write some code and hopefully the code that it writes on the first pass works. Sometimes it doesn't and you have to iterate back and forth. You say, hey, I'm getting this error and it will update the code for you. So I'll copy that code and then I come to my app script and I override what's in there by default. And then let's just name this, I don't know, test API. So I have my code. I'm going to click save. But now I need to deploy this uh, to a web app, meaning this script would run when you go to a certain web address. So I go up, up here to deploy, I click new deployment. I'm gonna select a type and I'll choose web app. 
I'm gonna choose who has access only or to anyone. So anyone will have access again in the same way that anyone with the link will have access to that Google, Google Doc. Anyone with access to this script will have access to it. Now, there are ways where you can add authentication to both of these steps. It's beyond the scope of this video as I'm trying to keep this simple, but there are ways that you can add that sort of authentication if you need it. Now, who has access? Anyone, I hit deploy. And what will happen next is because this web app will be open to the web and will be, will be accessing content on my Google account, I actually need to authorize uh, this script to access con some content, in, the, in this case, a Google Doc, on my Google account. So I'll click Authorize Access. That will open up a, a screen where I choose my account. Now, it gives you this kind of warning. Google hasn't verified this app. Well, of course it hasn't. It, it's a brand new app that I, I just created. Because I created it, I know that there's nothing malicious in it, but Google, Google gives you this warning and requires you to click this advanced button and then click go to test API unsafe. Basically what it's saying is, hey, we haven't tested this script. We don't know if it's going to be accessing and doing things to your data that you may or may not understand. Um, and so I have to allow now this script access to my Google Doc. And as soon as I do that, it finishes, the web app is deployed, and I have now a web app URL. And I'll copy that, I'll hit done. I'm gonna come to, back to ChatGPT and I'll say, great, code has been deployed. I have a web app. Can you please create a link that I can use to test the API? And then I'll paste in that web app URL. And so then what it does, it creates this test API link. I'll try it, and if it works, looky there, that is the contents in JSON format of the Google Doc. Now this is the content that ChatGPT or your custom GPT will get. And so that's our next step. So now that we've opened an API to this Google Doc, we're going to come to the chatgpt.com forward slash GPTs. Uh, you will generally need a ChatGPT Plus, um, ChatGPT for Teams, or ChatGPT Enterprise account in order to build these custom GPTs. You come here, you, in the upper right-hand corner, you click Create. It's gonna take you to the Create GPT window. This tutorial is not about how to build a GPT, so I'll leave that to a separate training. I'm, gonna, I'm going to assume you know how to create your own GPT. However, down here you have these things called actions. And we are gonna create an action that has access to this API. So I hit Create Action. Now, remember how I mentioned there are ways that you can add authentication, including an API key. Again, beyond the scope of this video, but just so you're aware, you can then, you could prompt with your ChatGPT friend, hey, I'd like to add an API key authentication to this, and you could iterate back and forth and it would help you do so. But anyway, so you have authentication at the top. I'm just gonna keep that as none. And then you have schema. Now schema is essentially um, telling your GPT how your API in this case works and that way it can use it. And so I, I, but I need to create the schema. And so to do that, actually, there, ChatGPT has created a custom GPT to write schema. It's this get help from actions GPT. I'll click that. This opens up. And I need to prompt it. And so likewise, in my written instructions, I've created a prompt. You can use your own. Uh, but in essence, we're gonna say create a simple schema based on this code, which creates an API to a, Google, to a Google Doc, ensure the path is this. So this is one of those kind of things I learn. You do it the first time, it breaks, and you've gotta iterate back and forth, and you find out that oftentimes it doesn't in include the correct path. Here's my app script code and corresponding web app URL. So I'm going to give it the code. Copy that. Oops, go to the action GPT as well as the web app URL, right? Which is manage deployments. It's right here, web app URL. Copy that. So I've given it the code itself, I've given it the web app URL, and now it will write that schema for us. So it writes the schema, I hit copy code, 
I come back to this action and I just paste it into the schema. Now, if it worked correctly, and it did, it has available actions now. A get method with the path that we need. Now, when I say if it doesn't have the right path, you come up here under paths and notice how it's forward slash EXEC. Sometimes it'll write it like that, and that's wrong. And then you'll have an error. So write it, write it correctly, the path, and then uh, if, if this is going to be publicly available, you'd need a privacy policy. In this case, I'm not. And so I'll go ahead and let's just simply ask it, um, please pull my Google Doc. Let's see if that... So this is the test environment off here to the right. So as soon as it tries, it's going to say, wants to talk to script.google, and you have to give it permission to do so. So I'll do so. And I can go in here and see what it does. I've retrieved your Google Doc content. Here's an overview of its sections. And then it kind of gives us an overview, right? It's got the market overview. It's got our property performance reports for July, August, and September. Awesome. So I could say, uh, what is the property's perform um, occupancy rate? Yeah, actually, we already know that. Um, I don't know, in, in August. It already set it up here, but the occupancy rate for Greentown Commons in August 2024 was 95.4%. Where did it find that? It found that in this document. So we've now created a custom action that has, that has given this custom GPT that we would build access to this Google Doc. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, again, I have written instructions. We've also created a custom GPT to help hold your hand and walk you through the process of, of, of creating this integration. Uh, other, but if you have any questions or if you run into trouble, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for your time.